Hey guys, it's Crystal Renee here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, thanks for joining. In this video, I'm going to show you how I grew my axillias from three blooms to where it is now in just three months. If you're interested, then stay tuned. So three months ago, when I first received this little guy, it only had three blooms on it. I had no idea how to care for it. I didn't even know if it would grow any more flowers. I had no idea how these auxilias reproduce. Because the planter that it came in did not have any drainage holes, and I was afraid to overwater, I did go ahead and repot it. I repotted it in a forage planter where it still remains till today. As you can see, I must have been caring for her in the correct way because she did give me two new blooms, bringing me to a total of five instead of three. Which brings us to today where she is at a whopping 16 blooms and one on the way, which I will show you later in this video. So here is where I have her sitting in my southwest facing window where she gets plenty of indirect sunlight, where she tends to love it. When spring and summer comes, I'm not too sure if this location will still be the perfect spot for her, but I will keep you updated and let you know when that time comes. Now let me tell you a little bit more about this Auxilius. Auxilius come in many different varieties. This particular variety is called an Auxilius triangularis. Most people call them a false shamrock because of how it's shaped. This axillus is also native to most countries in Southern South America. Since we're talking about the shape of these leaves, each leaf is a triangular shape in its deep purple color and with a lighter purplish rose feature in the center. Although these leaves are what people are most attracted to about this plant, it does produce trumpet shaped flowers in the spring in the colors pink or white. But in my case, mine have been producing these trumpet shaped flowers ever since I've had her. But that's because I live in the sunny city of Phoenix where most of my plants here are confused because of the sun. So what you're seeing now is what the flower looks like before it is in full bloom. And the leaf that you're now seeing is a fresh new bloom. As you can see, it doesn't quite have the lightest purple in the center just yet. That's because it hasn't met its mature stage of growth yet. Now let's get back to the flowers. As you can see, this is one of the flowers after completely opening up. I think they are very beautiful, but I do tend to snip them off to just promote more growth of the leaves. So I've come to find out that these flowers and leaves grow from a bulb. And if this bulb is in too heavy of a soil and retains too much water, 
they will rot. So remember in the beginning I mentioned the bloom number 17? Well, this is she. Isn't she gorgeous? She's so little and they are so fuzzy. Now let's get back to the soil. Now like I mentioned earlier, you want to have a well-draining soil like I always use my peat-based soil, a little bit of perlite, a little bit of orchid bark, and voila. Because if you don't use a well-draining soil, your auxilias will not stand a chance. Now earlier I did touch bases on a little bit about the lighting conditions that this plant loves. But I will say they do love bright light. If they are placed in a shadier location, they may tend to get a bit leggy in trying to reach for the sun. So you might want to keep it in a bright location. You can grow these plants outdoors, but you will have to put them in a shady location where it still gets a little bit of sunlight. That way, the leaves won't burn due to direct sunlight. Now let's talk about watering. I only water my plant when one or two things are occurring. One, I water when my leaves are drooping. Drooping is an indication to let you know that your plant needs water. Two, I water when my soil looks dry or feels dry an inch down into the soil. Now this plant is supposed to go dormant during the summer months, so I'm looking forward to see how to care for it in the summer months. And I will be back with another video to show you how I did so. Although, I haven't experienced any pest issues, but the Axelius plant is prone to mealybugs and spider mites. Although it's no need to prune this plant, but you can propagate it, which I will show you in another video as well. So when it comes to fertilizing, you only want to do this in its growing months. When you fertilize, I say do it every other week. I typically do it every other week, but when I fertilize, I haven't used any liquid fertilizer, but I did fertilize with my aquarium water. So, so far, so good. Now what I'd like to mention is that I'm not a professional. The tips that I'm giving today is what I do here in my home and hopefully they can help you in yours. I would like to thank you all for watching this video. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up and if you're not yet a member, please subscribe. I would like to thank everybody who's been watching me from the beginning. I am now at a whopping 1500 subscribers and it's thanks to you all. Thank you for enjoying and watching. Hey, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. And until next time, happy growing.